Hello everyone, today we will talk about glass transition temperature. First of all, we will talk about what is glass transition temperature. When I come across with the concept of glass transition temperature, I feel very confused about it if it just read the definition without pictures. So I would use this project to help others better understand what it is. As you can see in Wikipedia or somewhere else, the definition is abstract. I can read one of these for you. Glass transition is a reversible transition in amorphous material from a hard or relatively brittle glassy state into a viscous or rubbery state as the temperature is increased. So from a boring definition, you will not have a thorough understanding of the concept and you will feel very confused about it. We may ask what is glassy state like and what is rubbery state like. Next, I will use examples to show you what is glassy state and what is rubbery state. First, it is the glassy state. You can imagine a plastic in winter, it is very brittle and easy to break, right? So as you can see in this picture, it is a brittle tube. So that is in a glassy state. And then a rubbery state. You can imagine a plastic in a car when in summer, it seems very soft and rubbery. And that is the rubber state. So the transition temperature between the two conditions is glass transition temperature. The two conditions is from the glass state to the rubber state. So next, I will use animations to show what it is. First, let's run this code for you. So the blue ball will stay where they are, however, the red ball will move around to show the movement of the molecules. When it is in glassy state, the red ball will only vibrate slightly. However, when the temperature rises above glass transition temperature, you will see that the, the red ball will move violently. Yes, so that is the rubbery state. So if it is a polymer, the polymer chains will wiggle around. Yes, the red line will wiggle around if it is above glass transition temperature or we can use a graph to show that so this is the glass transition temperature and this is a melting temperature if it is a crystalline material it will only have melting temperature however if it is amorphous material it will have glass transition temperature and melting temperature and this is the glass state and then will be super cooled liquid, and then it will be liquid. So usually we have three ways to determine the glass state temperature, glass transition temperature of a material. First is the DSC, differential scanning calorimetry. If you use DSC, you will put sample and reference in the cup. So both the sample and reference are maintained at nearly the same temperature throughout the experiment. Generally, the, ex the temperature program for DSC analysis is designed such that the sample holder temperature increases linearly as a function of time. So after DSC, you will get a graph that is the DSC graph. And you, we can use this graph to determine what is Tg. So here, as you can see, the Tg is 52.1 degrees centigrade. The temperature is plotted on the x-axis and heat flow is plotted on y-axis. Tg is usually a temperature range, not a specific temperature. 
the reported Tg is the midpoint of the temperature range. So what if there are mixtures of two kinds of polymers? How can we determine its Tg? The Tg of the mixtures. So first, we will have a Fox equation. So that is the Fox equation. And we will use a graph and manipulate function to show that. This black point represents the glass transition temperature for the mixture. So if the ratio becomes larger, it will move down. The TG2 represents the second material and the TG1 represents the first one. So if TG2 is becoming larger, the curve will move down. If the TG1 is becoming larger, it will become a linear line. And then we also have Golden Taylor equation. So Golden Taylor equation will add a constant k in the equation. So this is the equation. If we compare these two equations together, we will get a graph of the two. So the blue line is the Fox equation and the golden gold line is a golden taylor equation so if the constant d is becoming larger the line will move up if the k is becoming lower the curve will move down right so that is what i want to talk about today thank you for your watching